Hi, I'm Tom from Heroic Labs, and in this bite-sized video, I'll be showing you how to use Nakama's server runtime code to create a daily reward system using TypeScript. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll assume you've already got a Nakama server project up and running, but just in case you don't, you can find a link to the installation documentation, as well as the Nakama project template repository in the description of this video, which will give you everything you need to get started. Before we begin, Let's quickly run through the various steps we'll take to implement a daily reward system using the Nakama server runtime. First, we start by registering the RPC functions in the server runtime bootstrapper. Second, we look at how we implement the daily reward eligibility RPC, making use of Nakama storage objects. Next, we look at how we implement the claim daily reward RPC using the Nakama wallet and notification systems. And finally, we'll run the server via Docker and test out our daily reward system using the Unity Sample project and look at how it works under the hood using the Nakama console. Okay, let's start by opening up our server project in VS Code and opening the main.ts file. This file serves as a bootstrapper which will initialize our custom server runtime code and register our RPCs or remote procedure calls which can then be called using a Nakama client such as the Unity client I'll show you later in the video. You can see here that we're registering three RPCs with the Nakama server. Each of these RPCs needs a unique string identifier and then a function which will be executed when the RPC is triggered. We can ignore the first one, which is just a simple RPC I have in this project that will always return a success response. The ones we're interested in are RPC can claim daily reward and RPC claim daily reward. The first of these will be used to determine if the current user is eligible to claim their daily reward and the second will be used to actually claim it. Let's dive into these now by heading over to the module slash daily rewards.ts file. The first thing to note here is that the RPC functions themselves have a very specific signature. They receive a context which contains information about the request and the user making the request. Next is a logger which can be used to log various information to the server, for example debug messages, warnings and errors. Then we have the Nakama runtime object, which allows us to perform many Nakama related functions such as creating matches, accessing storage engine objects, and creating leaderboards just to name a few. Finally, we have a string payload which will contain any body content that the RPC received. Typically you'd use this to pass some serialized contextual data to the RPC where required using something like JSON. With the signature covered, let's look at how we implement the daily reward eligibility check in RPC can claim daily reward. Starting at the top, we first grab the latest daily reward object for the user from the Nakama storage engine. Let's go and have a look at how that's done in the get last daily reward object function. Here we start by checking that the request has a valid context. If the context object doesn't include a user ID, then we'll throw an error and exit early. Similarly, we're also performing a check to enforce that this request should not accept a payload. We could skip this check, but it's often useful to be strict about how a client should interact with the server and enforcing this here promotes that behavior. Next up, we create a storage read request object. Here we're specifying what object we'd like to grab from the Nakama storage engine. In this instance, we want to look in a collection called reward for an object with the key daily. And we only want to look for this object where it's owned by the user making the request. This collection and object are not Nakama specific and they've been created specifically for this example. You can create collections and objects with any name you feel is appropriate for your project. Once we have this storage read request object, we can use it to perform a read operation. We create an empty array of storage objects and attempt to read from the Nakama storage engine by passing the object to the nk.storageRead function. Note that this function takes an array, so we define an array and populate it with just our single storage read request object. If this request fails for whatever reason, we'll catch it using our try catch block, log it with the logger, and then throw an error which will exit execution of this RPC. This is a pattern that we'll use throughout this example and it's extremely useful for debugging failing server runtime code. Assuming the read succeeds, we go on to define an empty daily reward object with a default value of zero for the last claim Unix value. In this example, last claim Unix is a value that holds a Unix timestamp which indicates when the user last claimed their daily reward. Then we'll loop through each object returned from the read request and when we find the object where the key is daily, we assign the value of this object to our daily reward variable. The final part of this function simply returns that daily reward object. Moving back to the RPC can claim daily reward function, 
Once we've got the daily reward object, we create a response object to send back to the user that contains a boolean value indicating whether or not they are eligible to claim the daily reward. Again, the logic for this is encapsulated in another function called CanUserClaimDailyReward. This is a relatively simple function. First, we check to see if the daily reward object passed to it has a last claim Unix value. If it doesn't, we'll assign it a value of zero. Next up, we create a date object representing midnight of the previous day. And finally, we return a value indicating whether or not the last time the user claimed their reward was before midnight of the previous day. If it was, the return value is true, otherwise it's false. Let's go back to the RPC can claim daily reward function and take a look at how we send the result to the user making the request. Once we've got the response object, we turn it into a JSON string using json.stringify. We use the logger to add a debug log entry to the server to indicate the response is about to be sent to the user, and this is really useful for debugging. And then finally, we return the JSON string. This is what the user making the request will actually receive. Now that we've implemented the eligibility check, let's see how we implement the actual daily reward claim by looking at RPC claim daily reward. Firstly, we create a default response object containing a single property called coins received with a value of zero. If the user is not eligible to receive a daily reward, this is what they'll receive. Next up, similar to the previous RPC, we go and retrieve the latest daily reward object for the user. We then call the same can user claim daily reward function to check for the user's eligibility. If the user is eligible, we update the value of the response's coined received property to 500. Next, we create a change set object, which will be used to update the user's wallet. This change set object has a single property called coins. This is a value which determines how many coins to increase or decrease the user's coins value by. In this case, we're going to increase the user's coin value by the value of the coins received property. We then make a call to the nk.walletUpdate function. This function takes the user's ID, the change set object, an object containing any additional metadata, and a boolean to specify whether this change should be recorded in the ledger. We're not interested in passing any additional metadata here or recording the update, so we simply pass an empty object and false for the last two arguments. Once we've updated the user's wallet, we're going to send them a notification. To do this, we create a notification request object containing a code value, and this can be any positive integer. Integers of zero and below are reserved for server-specific notifications. Then the content that we want to send, whether or not it should be a persistent notification, non-persistent notifications will only be received if the user is online, a subject, and the ID of the user we're sending it to. Once we've defined this object, we attempt to send the notification using the nk.notificationSend function. All being well, we update the daily reward object's last claim Unix value to the current Unix timestamp. We then create a storage write request object. This is used to persist the new value of the daily reward object to the Nakama storage engine. You can see that we want to write to the reward collection using the same daily key as we previously read from. We also specify that this object is read-only so that it can't be modified by a client directly. Next, if our existing daily reward object already existed in the Nakama storage engine, it will have a version property. If this is the case, we assign the write.version property the same value. We do this for optimistic concurrency control. At a basic level, that ensures that we only write to the object if no other changes have been made to it since we last retrieved it. Now that we have our storage write request object, we attempt to write to the updated object by calling nk.storageWrite. Finally, we JSON stringify the response object, log out the response at the debug level, and return the result to the user. With these two RPC functions implemented in our server runtime code, we're ready to test out our daily reward system. In order to test it out, we're going to need to run the server. To do this, we'll launch it via Docker. For this project, I have a Docker file and a docker-compose.yaml file, which will build the TypeScript and output an index.js file. That will be copied across into our Nakama image. It's also worth mentioning that there's a local.yaml file, which we're using to configure the server, and one of these configuration properties tells Nakama that our entry point is the index.js file that we'll build. Let's launch the server now by running docker compose op. Now that that's up and running, let's open our Unity project to test it out. First, let's create a brand new user.
Now that we're logged in, let's go and take a look at the server console. You can see that we've got a debug log entry that tells us the can claim daily reward RPC was called, and it sent back a can claim daily reward value of true. Going back to our demo, it's received this value and it's now showing us that we can claim our daily reward, so let's do that now. Okay, so we've claimed our 500 coins. Let's take a look in the server logs again. You'll see we have another debug log entry that tells us the claim daily reward RPC was called, and it passed back a JSON object with a coins received value of 500. Perfect. Now let's go back to our demo. We'll log out and log back in. You can see that it's now telling us that we've already claimed our daily reward. Checking the server logs, you can see again that we called the can claim daily reward RPC, and this time it returned a can claim daily reward value of false. Just to make sure this works for different users, let's log out and create a new user. And you can see that for this new user, we're eligible to claim our reward. Nice. One last thing I'd like to show is how all this looks in the Nakama console. You can access this by opening a browser and going to http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 7351. The default login credentials are admin and password. Once here, let's go and have a look at the accounts section. You can see that the two accounts we just created are listed here. Let's take a note of the ID for the first user we created. Now let's head over to the storage section. You can see we've got two records here, both in the rewards collection and both with a key of daily. These are the two daily reward records for the users that we just created. Just to test that our logic is working, let's drill into the record assigned for our first user. Here we can see the value of this object and we can actually go in and modify it. Let's update the last claim Unix value to be some time further in the past and save it. Now let's head back to our demo and log back in as our first user. You can see now that it's telling us we're eligible to claim our daily reward again. Perfect. With that done, we've successfully implemented a daily reward system using Nakama server runtime code. In this example, we implemented it using TypeScript, but Nakama also supports writing your server runtime code in Go and Lua. So feel free to experiment with these two. Links to the server runtime documentation can all be found in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.